Hello and welcome to the 5-2 Diet Podcast. We're here to help you lose weight and feel great with intermittent fasting. I'm Kate Harrison from the 5-2 dietbook.com. I lost 31 pounds, that's 14 kilograms on this way of life. And I've written four books about it. I run one of the biggest 5-2 groups on the web and I still fast every single week. Fasting is easy, flexible and free. This podcast will help you 5-2. Hello and welcome to the 5-2 Supercharge podcast. This podcast goes with the 5-2 Supercharge program, 30 days of challenges, ideas and activities to help you start or reboot your intermittent fasting experience. I started the Supercharge and in fact all the materials on 5-2 for myself and then I posted the activities on our free 5-2 Facebook group where we've had some amazing responses. You can use this podcast by listening to all the challenges in one go, or it might be easier just to stop at the end of each one and really think it through. There's a permanent link to all the responses I got on Facebook in the group itself, so you can add to those responses anytime and read what other people think. With the supercharge, you might want to start it on the first of any month, but of course you can start it any day you choose. Just remember to keep track of which day you're up to. Before we get cracking on the supercharge, a little bit about me and the podcast. So I'm Kate Harrison. I started doing the 5-2 or intermittent fasting diet in the summer of 2012 before there were any books or any websites about it. I set up a Facebook group to share tips with a few other people that I knew were doing it. And from there, I decided there was enough demand and enough tips that we were sharing to write a practical guide to the benefits and also the best ways of getting on with fasting. Now, I've written a total of four books on this topic and on this fantastic way of life. The 5-2 Diet book, which was the first one, plus the Ultimate 5-2 Recipe book, the 5-2 Good Food Kitchen, and then 5-2 Your Life, which is about making small changes to improve your health and other aspects of your life, like work-life balance, work in general, your relationships and your fitness I started making podcasts earlier in 2015 and there's been a bit of a gap since the last one during the summer because I've been busy working on other projects. I'm a fiction author as well so if you like novels you can find out more at kate-harrison.com but I really wanted to give myself a kickstart in the autumn of 2015 after a summer of eating out and going out and that meant I'd put on a few more pounds than I'd liked. I also wanted to create something that you could try at any time you liked. And here it is. How to start the supercharge. Well, all you need is a bit of time each day and a notebook or a note function on your smartphone or your laptop so that you can jot down ideas that inspire you. I think it's quite important to write stuff down. It will give you ideas and strategies, but it will also kickstart a process of thinking things through, whether that's about understanding your attitudes to food and dieting, or whether it's practical things like finding new ideas for what to eat on fast days and eating well on the non-fast days. Don't be surprised if once you've jotted down a few ideas, you keep wanting to add to them. It really does seem to trigger something in my brain, which makes me want to make more of those ideas and to add to them all the time. What I'm going to do with each of these kickstarts is give you the central topic for the day, give you the question and then a tip or an idea to go with it. At the beginning of each one, I will play a sound like this. So it's easy for you to find each one. Let's get cracking. Supercharge day one. Why do you 5-2? Whether you're just starting 5-2 or you were one of the early birds, reminding yourself why you're doing this is powerful and motivating. So write down some notes on why you started intermittent fasting. As many reasons as you can think of, from health to body image, the why really matters. P.S. When is your first fast day in the supercharge? Maybe it's today. Commit to it now and write it in your diary. 5-2 tip for day one. Buy a cute notebook. Write down your answers to the questions and challenges as the month goes by to create your own reference book of inspiration and progress. Remember, you can refer to this anytime you like in future, not just during the supercharged month. 
I scribbled down my reasons and there were lots of them. They were things like body image. They were the fact that I had really struggled to lose weight permanently through any other method. And this seemed like the last chance saloon. And there's also the health reasons which are really important for me. My family history includes lots and lots of cancer, unfortunately, and diabetes and other chronic conditions. And I knew that by being overweight, which I had been off and on for years before I started doing intermittent fasting, I was increasing my risk of all those things. So it seemed like a no brainer, but I also at that stage didn't believe it would ever work for me. Supercharge day two, your story so far. We all have our stories with 5-2. Of course, we're aiming for a happy ever after. But what's your weight loss story? Understanding how you got to where you are today will help you change for the better. So in your notebook or on your laptop, wherever you're keeping track of what you're doing during the supercharge, jot down your experiences of food, weight and diets. You might find it helpful to join or go on the Facebook group and check out the links to Supercharge Day 2 and read some of the amazing stories that people have got and see how they've managed to turn their lives around. You don't have to share this, though, with the group if you don't want to. This can be quite an emotional topic. A lot of us have issues around food and dieting going back a long way. So be gentle with yourself as well. 5-2 5-2 tip for Supercharge Day 2, write down each day's question at the top of a new page. That way you've got lots of space for new memories or moments that you remember, ideas, so that you can jot them down on that new page and add to them wherever you want to. My story of dieting and health, well, I have been a yo-yo dieter since I lived on cottage cheese and crisp breads in my late teens. I used to occasionally add uh, a sliced pineapple for a treat. It makes me feel quite sick to think of it now. I bought all the diet books at the time. High fibre, low fat, hip and thigh, low carb. I joined some of the slimming clubs and I constantly went from slender to chubby and back again so many times. It left with me with a pretty poor body image as well and it cost me a lot of money too if I add it up over the years. Not to mention most of the diet food I used to eat was disgusting. When I started 5-2 I really had zero faith in myself to be able to control my weight or appetite. Um, I was wrong happily enough and here I am over three years later maintaining a healthy weight so that's well within my BMI. I lost two stone and within two or three pounds I've maintained that ever since and if you've been on and off diets in the past you'll know that the maintenance is the tricky bit and that's what many of us feel is the difference with fasting. Supercharged day three the future's bright. The past can't be changed, but the future is absolutely up for grabs. So imagine yourself at the end of this supercharged month, feeling fantastic about what you've achieved. What changes would you like to see? It might be reaching a new landmark on the scales, might be feeling confident enough to join the gym for the first time, wearing a favourite outfit that you're struggling to get into at the moment, or simply knowing you've had eight or ten brilliant fast days. Come up with a specific goal and then write it down. If you like, share it in the Facebook group. Here's my 5-2 tip for Supercharge Day 3. Use your notebook or any spare paper you've got to write down lots of ideas about how you might look, feel or behave by the 30th of September. Then pick one or two favourite ideas, what feels like it's achievable but still exciting. Write that down in big letters in the centre of a new page And keep it somewhere that it will remind you, because keeping those goals in mind can be a real strategy for success. So my goal for this month is pretty simple. I've been doing intermittent fasting for three years, but the summer has involved lots of eating out and seeing friends. And I've ended up doing fewer fasts and fallen into a few unhelpful habits as well, like automatically buying cake from the lovely stall in my local food market or having an extra piece of toast when I'm not that hungry. I find that those also make me enjoy the treat times a bit less. So by September the 30th, I want to have had 10 great fast days, and I also want to have lost my newfound snacking habit. Supercharge day four, fast day shopping list. What foods do you find you really can't live without on a fast day? Whether it's courgettes or cauliflower for courgette or cauliflower rice or ready-made soups or main meals to help you stay on track. 
write those down and create yourself a little shopping list. Read what other people suggest on the Facebook group as well. And do check out the 5-2dietbook.com website. Uh, The food section has lots of ideas, including recipes for the cauliflower rice and the courgettes. My 5-2 tip for day four is keep that list as a text file on your smartphone to make shopping easy. And also maybe have a list of easy to repair dishes pinned up in your kitchen to help if you get hungry and want something in a hurry. My big fast date standbys are soups and salads. I make batches of my own soup, lots of recipe ideas on the website and also in my cookbooks. And then I freeze it in individual portions. I do also like some of the fresh made soups you can find in the fridges of the big UK supermarkets. I liked uh, glorious soups, their skinny soups are really good um, when I've got no time to make my own. And for a quick salad, I like um, the lower fat buffalo mozzarellas mixed with rocket and some balsamic vinegar. Really, really tasty. Supercharge day five, helpmates, who will spur you on? There's a reason why weight loss groups are really popular. Group supports can work extremely well, whether it's offering advice, reassurance or shared celebration when you hit a goal. Think about your whole support network. Is there a friend, a family member or a colleague you can rely on to understand what you're doing and help keep you on track? Or maybe the Facebook group is your emergency service. My 5-2 tip for Supercharge Day 5 is explain in advance to a helpmate what support you need so they know the encouragement you're after if you're having a bad day and give them a call and need to stay on track. For example, you might like to ask them to remind you how important your health is in all of this or just the fact that you're awesome whatever size you are but they want you to be happier. My response to this would be that I completely rely on the Facebook group. It's why I set it up. Plus another group of close Facebook mates who I go on into our little private group and they reassure me that I look great even if I'm feeling a bit bad because I put on a couple of pounds on holiday, that sort of thing. And that reassurance is all I need to get myself back on track. Whereas if I was left on my own devices, occasionally I think that might make me feel a bit down, think, oh, I've, I've lost all the progress I've made. It's the start of a slippery slope. We really just want to be put back on track by the people that care about us. Supercharge day six, fitness fixes. Contrary to the myths, you don't actually need to exercise to lose weight, but it can help A, to increase the energy and calories your body needs to use, which then creates a deficit, which then allows you to lose weight. But it can also B, help you to feel really great. So today I want you to think about what activities you can do this week, probably, possibly today, to get the blood pumping and the calories burning. My 5-2 tip for today is to remember that fitness doesn't have to involve lycra or trainers or a gym membership. Gardening, dancing in the kitchen, fast walking with the dog, they all count, as long as you get slightly breathless and start to feel a bit more alive. So think about working fitness into your everyday life and particularly about finding something that you're really going to enjoy. My experience when it comes to fitness is that I've really hated PE and all all forms of exercise at school and yet now I really enjoy running and fast walking. Getting a dog, our little dog is 18 months old now, has really helped me enjoy getting out and about more and also because I have a sedentary job I really make an effort to get up and about at least every half an hour. I'm going to take the dog for an extra long walk later on. Supercharge day seven, reviewing your week. Week one is nearly done and how are you feeling? It takes a while for changes to show in your body or on the scales, but the effects on your mindset can be much more rapid. So jot down in your notebook how you're feeling and what you've worked out about yourself this week and what you're proud of. Plus, choose your fast days for next week and put them in your diary or an online calendar. My 5-2 tip is reviewing your progress and setting dates for your next fast days only takes a few minutes but is really effective in helping you to commit and stay on track. 
So day seven for me, and I've done two good fast days during the week, and I've also been for a run twice, which has made me feel really good and full of achievement. It's been fantastic as well to read the responses and people's stories over in the Facebook group, and it's a real reminder for me of why this is so effective, not just for myself, but also for so many others. Bring it on week two. I'm fasting Monday and Wednesday of next week. Supercharged day eight. We're into week two and we're talking protein power. On a fast day, making sure you include foods rich in protein in your meals can really reduce hunger pangs. Eggs, lower fat meats like chicken and turkey, pulses and tofu are all good sources that won't break your fast. So have a think, jot down some ideas of which meals you could include on your fast days and your non-fast days to include high quality protein. Five two tip. There is a balance to be struck here. Very high consumption of animal proteins can be bad for your health. So experiment with vegetable sources from homemade hummus. The trick there is to use less oil than the recipe suggests. It'll keep it lower in calories for a fast day. Or maybe adding canned lentils or tofu to stews and soups. My story, well... I'm actually a veggie myself and I use eggs and pulses and tofu on fast days. I used to actually find pulses quite hard to tolerate, if you get my meaning. Um, It was a bit unpleasant at times, but actually the more regularly I eat them, the better it gets. And they're definitely great for friendly bacteria in the gut. Supercharge day nine, a question of timing. That's meal timing. When do you eat and have you tried changing your meal times or your meal frequency as part of your 5-2 strategy? Many people do skip breakfast because they find that on a fast day they're less hungry that way. Might sound opposite of what you'd expect but actually a lot of us find that helps. Some of us, and this includes me some days, depends how I feel, find that waiting till evening before eating means that they're less hungry but also they can eat a more normal full-size meal with the family. If you have medication or a medical condition that affects meal timing, do check with your doctor first of all. But it is safe for most of us. So have a think about whether experimenting with meal timing might help you. My five two tip or fact for the day, well, it's not true that skipping breakfast will automatically make you fat. Studies on this are really inconclusive, so just go with what your body tells you. The only possible exception apart from the medical conditions that I mentioned before, would be in younger people. It does seem that the research is quite strong on children being better able to concentrate if they've had a breakfast meal. So bear that in mind. But for most adults, it's up to you. My experience on meal timing, well, I've definitely changed my meal time since starting 5-2. On fast days, generally, I do wait until lunchtime between before eating a soup or a salad and sometimes I even wait till evening so that I can enjoy that bigger meal as I said. It's a strategy I find very useful for controlling hunger and also give me fewer chances to be tempted to eat more than my limit. I also eat two rather than three meals on many non-fast days now. There's evidence that reducing the occasions when you eat and avoiding snacking in particular helps the body because it's not constantly having to deal with blood sugar spikes. So That's a good reason to go with that three regular meals idea that probably our parents and our grandparents were recommending. um, Yeah, a bit of old school wisdom. It's day 10 of the supercharge and we are talking tips up days. Now, this is a very important phrase or term in our 5-2 journey and tips up day stands for temporary interruption to scheme unplanned. I came up with this slightly tongue in cheek name for occasional bad fasts after reading how guilty people felt about lapses. I wanted to inject a little bit of humour into it. So today, think about how you might handle the odd day when it doesn't work out or think about some ideas for getting back on the wagon, especially if you've had the odd tits up day and have successfully overcome it. How I think about the strategies you use so that you've got them up your sleeve if it happens again. 5-2 tip. Remember, if you are overweight, it took many, many weeks or months 
or maybe even years of overdoing it to put that weight on. So the occasional day when your fast doesn't work out won't blow your diet. What will blow it is the guilt that makes you eat emotionally and in an uncontrollable way. So if you can balance out your feelings and not automatically think the worst, it will make a big difference. For me, I don't have that many tips up days, but when I do, they fall into two categories. Days when I have more of an appetite than usual and go, say, 50 to 100 calories over my normal fast day limit of 500, I still count those as a fast. And then I have very rare days where either good or bad news means I abandon the fast completely. For me, that's just life. It's also the flexibility of this and I just reschedule for a more convenient time. Supercharge day 11, hot stuff. If you are hungry on a fast day, a hot drink is often all you need to send the thirst and hunger pangs packing. You don't have to avoid coffee and tea on 5-2, though you should count the milk if you use it calorie-wise, but infusions and herb teas can also be a delicious pick-me-up. Try making your own with fresh herbs or dried spices or have a nice selection available in the cupboard or next to the kettle so that you've always got something that will keep you interested. My 5-2 fact and tip here is that during cold weather we can feel chilly while fasting. It's to do with the body preserving the heat and recognising that it's not getting perhaps as many calories as usual so it's being efficient but that means your extremities, particularly your hands and feet, might get a bit chilly. Having some low or no calorie hot drinks on hand will give your internal central heating a big boost and it'll also warm up your hands. What's not to love? Me, I can't start the day without a strong black coffee or two. They definitely keep me from feeling too hungry and they feel like a bit of a treat as well because I like the taste. I also really like mint teas and lots of berry flavoured ones and I make sure I keep changing so that I don't get bored with the same flavour. Supercharged day 12, beauty boosts. Of course, we all know that 5'2 and staying the right weight are great for your health. But to be fair, we're also a little bit vain, most of us, or I certainly am. So it makes sense while you're on this journey to find some quick fixes to make yourself feel and look great. A list of favourite products, rituals or tricks for helping you feel confident on your 5'2 journey. All it can take sometimes if you're feeling like things aren't moving quickly enough is something nice a new lipstick or a lovely smelling shower gel something like that to make you feel great my 5-2 tip around this is really knowing that if we're not feeling great about our bodies can it make us feel very miserable and more vulnerable to falling off the wagon if you like so one trick or one idea for writing in your notebook alongside a list of, of little treats that you might give yourself is to list your best three physical features and then alongside that list think about ways to enhance them or make yourself feel even better about them so if you've got great eyelashes a new mascara if you've got very nice feet you're proud of them then a nice pedicure a home done or if you can afford it in a salon or if you are very proud of your slim wrists then wearing your favorite bracelet can work well and although these are all quite female specific ideas uh, it applies to men as well perhaps some new cologne or nice moisturizer yes men can moisturize too just a little thing looking after yourself nurturing yourself will work a treat a few beauty boosters from me well my latest discovery is a Nivea in shower moisturizer which smells fantastic and you apply it while you're still in the shower and then you shower it off I'm a bit lazy when it comes to body moisturizing and I find it a real boon because I hate that bit where your skin's all tacky and you have to wait to get dressed doesn't happen with this and my other booster when I remember is getting my eyebrows threaded it's like a mini facelift for under a tenner Supercharged day 13, handling non-fast days. We often focus on fast days when we're talking about 5-2, but non-fasting days can be a source of stress, especially if you're not used to eating normally. What is normal? What will keep you from feeling hungry, but make sure that you're not putting weight back on again? What's your strategy for non-fasting days? Or do you have one? Have a think about what it might be. Do you follow your appetite or does it make you feel more confident? Do you have a calorie limit as a guideline? 
have a look at that and have a think. And it's really interesting to perhaps compare your responses with the responses of other people in the Facebook group. Remember, there's a link in the file system there that will take you to day 13, 14, whichever one it is that you want to look at and see what other people did, give you ideas. My 5-2 tip, well, we talk a lot about the TDEE, the Total Daily Energy Expenditure, which is an estimate of your total energy needs in calories for the day. A lot depends on things like your age, your gender, and how active you are. If you calculate your TDEE, you can do that in the calculator on the 5-2 website. Then perhaps just to check, tot up an average non-fasting day and compare and see if you're eating enough, perhaps not eating too much, or if you're eating a bit over the top because you've lost sight of what normal is, then it's worth just thinking about how you can lead it, bring it to under that number. My experience of non-fasting days, well, I have followed my appetite during 5-2 rather than slavishly counting calories, as I've had a lifetime of doing that, and it's really boring. I'm now maintaining, but I do know my TDEE, and I have a rough idea as well about what that amounts to in terms of food. So if I have had a heavy week, I do two fasts instead of one for the maintenance. In fact, I'm doing a couple every week at the moment because I know I did put a few pounds on in August. So that's another example of how the strategy can be flexible. And I'm still eating in a perfectly normal way on my non-fasting days. Supercharge day 14, reviewing this week and your week ahead. So we're nearly halfway through the supercharge now. How are you getting on? Do share some of your discoveries in the Facebook group or take a look at the goal that you looked and you set for yourself on day three. Are you making progress with it? If not, is there anything you can do to make it easier for yourself? And don't forget to plan which your fast days are this coming week. My tip or my 5-2 fact, well, if you've already achieved your goal, that's pretty phenomenal, well done. You may well have done. Sometimes we make really rapid progress. Now pick another from the list that you made on day three. You've probably had lots of ideas. Or revise your goal, make it a bit more challenging. For me, day 14, well, I'm four fast days down. I have been working hard to get back into the swing of things and my jeans are starting to feel slightly looser. Hooray, I'm definitely snacking less as well. It's not always that easy to break a habit, especially something like snacking, which does give you an instant reward. But if you've got a strategy and if you concentrate on one thing at a time, then it is possible and I'm getting there. Supercharge day 15, a song and a dance for a fast day. This is a really fun and simple challenge for you. Just pick a song that you love to dance to and create yourself a 5-2 playlist. So take a look on the Facebook group, see what other people have chosen and just remind yourself of some of those songs that you love that you can't stop dancing to. This is my 5-2 tip is to say that it might sound a bit silly but putting on your favourite track can be enough to distract you from thoughts of food. Plus, as I discussed in previous days, taking regular breaks from a sedentary job or a sedentary lifestyle is really good for your body. My choice of song is Happy Hour by The House Martins. It's really short, it's really sweet, and it reminds me of being really quite young. Supercharge day 16, veggie heaven. Veggies are the perfect choice for a fast day. Most are rich in nutrients, naturally low in calories, fibre dense, quick to prepare and great value for money. So think about how you can include some seasonal vegetables in your fast day menus. My 5-2 tip for Supercharge day 16 would be if you don't want to be too radical with your main meals, making them a bit more veggie friendly, then just swap meaty burgers or fillets with a vegetable alternative like a bean burger or a corn fillet and serve with lots and lots of vegetables as a side dish. Most, especially the green veg, are low in calories, so do make sure you double check. Things like avocado can be a bit higher, though they're still really good for you. In my case, I've been a veggie since my teens and it has definitely made fast days easier. I love mushroom stroganoff. It's um, one that I made a very cheesy video about. So if you want to see that video and have a bit of a giggle and also a good idea for a main course, 
then go to the 5 2 dietbookcom supercharge16, and you'll see the video there. I also really like stir-fried cauliflower rice with egg, and there's a recipe in the food section for that. Supercharge day 17, non-fast day challenge. Many of us do find non-fast days a bit tricky. See day 13 for people's responses on Facebook. But one way to stay on track without feeling like you're dieting is to choose a positive food challenge to focus the mind. What kind of thing might that be? Well, here are some of my tips. First challenge idea, eat at least five different colours of fresh produce each day or if you're feeling ambitious, even each meal. Lots and lots of colours will mean that you're getting lots and lots of micronutrients because the colours tend to indicate lots of the things that are good for you, lots of the vitamins and minerals. Another challenge idea, try a new ingredient from an exotic vegetable to an interesting sauce or spice blend once every non-fast day. Next one, decide to cut out snacks and focus instead on sitting down to each meal and really making it an occasion. The more you take your time with eating, the more you notice the flavours and the textures and the more satisfying a meal seems. This is one for me, definitely. We've got into very bad habits of eating in front of the telly, partly because we've had a bit of building work, which has put our dining space out of action. But I am going to commit to eating evening meals at the table six days a week. Only one TV dinner allowed. Supercharged day 18, egg excitement. Today's topic is eggs, perfect little packages of nutritious, versatile food. It's only about 80 calories for a medium egg, so they're great choices and they're very satiating, which means that they help you feel full for longer. So how do you like your eggs? Try the new idea today or have a read on the Facebook group and see what other people have suggested. And my tip or fact for the day is that research shows that eggs aren't a contributor to higher cholesterol for most of us. There are a very small number of conditions where you might be predisposed to being sensitive to eggs, but most of us don't fall into that category. So you can eat as many eggs as you like, especially free range ones, of course but they will keep you satisfied and there's no limit to what you can do with them. Well, almost no limit. My own experience with eggs, well, I have broadened my egg horizons over the years from scrambled, which was all I liked as a kid, to pretty much every kind now. And my very quick option, if I run out of ideas, is to melt a very small amount of coconut oil in a large non-stick pan to cook some whole spices and garam masala in that oil with some sliced mushrooms. Do that for about three or four minutes until it all starts to brown and smell heavenly. And then add an egg or two and let it fry in the edges of the pan till they go nice and brown and the yolk is just set. Spiced eggs with mushrooms, perfect fast day food. Supercharge day 19, brain food. When you're making changes to improve your life, it can be really motivating to watch videos, read features or listen to podcasts that help you really get a new perspective on lots of different aspects of life. So think about what you would like to know more about or follow one of the links online. You can look at the website and look at Supercharge 19 and you'll find ideas there for things like TED Talks, which are really fascinating, and you can store them on your mobile phone and listen to them or watch them in the bus queue. FutureLearn.com, that is a great site for some really amazing high-quality learning on everything from the economies of the movie business to health topics, and I also love BBC podcasts. So some of my favourites, I listen to them when I'm dog-walking or just out and about doing something boring, I like Health Check from the BBC. I like the Serial podcast, which was the great hit of 2014. It's a real-life crime drama, um, finding out whether somebody actually was responsible for a murder that they were jailed for. And there's a whole load of other suggestions. So take a look at the website to get some more ideas. 5-2 Supercharge, day 20, Your Superfoods. Now, we all hear a lot about superfoods and they can just be a marketing ploy to sell ingredients we're unfamiliar with for a high premium price. But some can still punch above their weight nutritionally and taste wise. So which have you tried and which do you ditch? 
have a look online, but don't overlook familiar foods with great nutritional profiles, things like garlic, broccoli, berries, lentils, oily fish, natural yogurt, egg and nuts. They're all really good choices that don't necessarily get the marketing budgets of the more expensive superfoods, but have lots to recommend them. For me, I love broccoli and avocado, although I use avocado and nuts quite sparingly on a fast day because they are very nutrient dense, but also quite high in oil, which adds up to more calories. I'm not completely convinced by chia seeds, which everybody talks about a lot. I find the texture when you've rehydrated them and they turn into something a little bit like frog spawn, not completely convinced. But you see what you think and do contribute to the discussion over on the Facebook group. Supercharge day 21 and yes we are at the end of week three so it's time to do a little mini review again. If you're making this month the one where you're prioritising your health and your well-being you should be starting to see some great changes. So have a look at your goal from day three, see how you're getting on with it, revise it if you like and also think about which fast days in the week coming up you're going to put in your diary. I've got tips about forming better habits and two that I think are really good are creating a visual reminder so that you don't forget you keep your mind on the habit that you want to improve for example leaving your trainers by the door so you're reminded to go for a run one of mine I do that or I put out my sports kit the night before I'm due to go for a run so that it's there saying to me yep This is something you plan to do, no excuses. The other thing you could do is to ask a friend to text you or email you once a day to remind you why you're doing what you're doing and why it will be worthwhile. My progress, week three, day 21. I was definitely a bit fed up at the end of August as I knew I'd put that weight on, just a couple of pounds, but it was enough to make my jeans less comfortable. They're fitting better. And I've been really enjoying the interaction over on the Facebook group from talking to people a mini goal I made last week as well of sitting and eating at the table is making a real difference and a Monday fast and a Tuesday fast for me this week supercharge day 22 salad days a great salad can really brighten up your plate and your day and salads don't have to be lightweight a wintry salad with roast veg or warm lentils can be satisfying and filling so have a think about creating a new salad or making an old favourite for your fast day this week. My tip, well it might be easier to see this on the site, so the 5-2dietbook.com forward slash supercharge22, but I've got a little formula for main course salads which means that you can make them different every time and it involves choosing one portion of a low calorie protein, I mean like cooked chicken, prawns, chickpeas, cottage cheese two to three portions of salad or cooked veggies a whole range of things you could include there so little gem lettuces cherry tomatoes roast pepper or fresh pepper grated carrot squash chunks these have been roasted in the oven and then one to three flavorings or dressings so again add in some nice flavor there but without adding too many calories finally a nice crunchy or interesting topping something like sunflower seeds pine nuts sultanas or crumbled feta cheese those toppings are quite high calorie so be a bit economical with them but they're also really flavorsome so that means that they pack a real punch And my favourite salads, well, I talked at the beginning about how I like to fast marinate um, some buffalo mozzarella in balsamic vinegar, some nice red onion. When the weather gets cooler, I do love the poi lentils that you get in a sachet, warmed up with roast vegetables like carrot or peppers, and a lower calorie dressing on the top really makes for a nice, quick and filling main course dish. Supercharge day 23, story time. To boost my mood on a fast day, I like to get lost in a good story, whether that's a book, a DVD box set, a TV series, or a downloaded movie. So have a think about your favourites, whether they're musicals or crime thrillers, and have something available so that if you feel like eating, you can lose yourself in a good story instead. I do find that entertainment these days doesn't have to break the bank. It's a lot cheaper than it used to be. Trials of things like Netflix or Amazon Prime are often free, but do remember to cancel them before you start paying if you don't find you're using them. BBC iPlayer in the UK is a fantastic resource. And YouTube also has lots of indie movies or shorts. Ebooks are often also given away to tempt you to buy other titles by the same author. And I found that bookbub.com 
highlight some of the best daily bargains so that you won't miss out special recommendations for me at the moment well i've been loving narcos or narcos on netflix which is uh, the story of pablo escobar it's partly in spanish so i've been trying to rethink my spanish as well and before that i love box sets mad men breaking bad and boardwalk empire i didn't think about food when i was watching those I also love reading, particular recommendations, Rowan Coleman, Julie Cohen, Jojo Moyes and Lisa Jewell. And I love this year's runaway success, The Girl on the Train. Day 24 of the supercharge and we're talking turbochargers today. So if you've been managing too fast each week since the beginning of, of the month, you should be seeing results. But if you want to turbocharge your supercharge, then you can tweak 5.2 a bit to suit you. I put a graphic again on the website, so the website forward slash supercharge24. But some of the options would be to change the number of fast days a week. You could go from two fast days to every other day or to three a week. Although you should never do more than two back to back because it can create some unhealthy changes in in your metabolism, which won't help you lose weight. You can restrict calories on non-fasting days. It's not something I choose to do. And I think in general, it's better if you don't. But if you wanted to combine 5-2 with the healthy eating guidelines from another diet, and aim for maybe around 1,500 calories, I, I wouldn't suggest fewer than that, then that can be helpful for a short-term fix. And my final suggestion would be to restrict eating times. And my final suggestion would be to restrict eating times on non-fasting days. So I do this a bit myself. Naturally, I tend to leave having breakfast a bit later It may have some metabolic advantages, which may mean that you'll lose weight quicker. But the other main thing is it gives you fewer opportunities to go a bit overboard. If you're eating fewer meals, then you're not likely to be tempted to keep eating as often. We talk about 16-8, which, for example, means you only eat during an eight-hour window, like, say, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. That can be helpful as a strategy for some people. Supercharge day 25, supercharge. It doesn't work quite as well saying it as it does written down because I'm talking about soups. If salads are the secret of 5-2 success in summer, then soups are their winter equivalent. They're really easy to make at home. There's no mystery to it. All you need is a saucepan, some fresh ingredients, plus some stock or water. And if you want that smoother texture, then a hand or a jug blender. But there are lots and lots of recipes out there, including lots on my 5-2 site. My 5-2 tip for the day is that research shows the same number of calories consumed in a hot soup will keep you fuller for longer than those ingredients served on a plate. So if in doubt, make a soup, blend it all up. And additionally, if you feel cold on a fast day, if it's a bit chilly out, then a hot soup is the best way to get over that. I love my soups. I love my lentil and tomato recipe on the website, which is a real winter warmer. While the pea and mint soup from my 5-2 Good Food Kitchen book is probably my favourite of all time. I do also find that if you haven't got any stock in the house, I try and make my own stock, but if I haven't got any, then marigold bouillon powder. It's um, just a a fine powder. It's a really great base for most soups and it keeps for ages and it's a lot less fiddly to use than stock cubes. Supercharge 26, paying it forward. Now, I have to admit that dieting can make us a little bit self-obsessed. All that weighing and calorie counting makes us look inwards. But you can counter that and also make yourself feel really great by doing something nice for other people. It doesn't have to cost money or time. Paying somebody a compliment, sending them a text, commenting on a photo on Facebook, they're all quick and rewarding for you and for them. So have a think. What can you do today to make the world a bit happier? One five two suggestion is that you know that fasting can be a money saver because we're eating less on fast days, particularly things like takeaways. So lots of five two people have decided to set aside donations towards food banks or homelessness, aid, charities, that sort of thing. Or simply buy a hot drink or the big issue maybe from somebody that you pass every day who might be in need of your help. 5-2 5-2 Supercharge, day 27, micro-movements. 
A sedentary lifestyle can be a killer, quite literally. Not moving for hours on end, day after day after day, can increase the risk of diseases like diabetes, as well as really making you feel all stiff and adding to everyday aches and pains. But the good news is that it's really easy to build micro movements into your day. Have a think about what you can do if you have got a sedentary lifestyle. I've got a few suggestions, so five to tips. Set your alarm to go off every half hour and stretch your legs or dance to the radio to get the blood pumping. Always take the stairs instead of the lift. Might sound a bit daunting depending on what floor you're on, but once you're in the habit, it's a very easy one to do. If you commute to work, then get off a stop early off the bus or the train and walk a little bit further. Might even save you money if you do it on the edge of a fair zone. Even try working standing up for an hour a day. I've got people uh, that I've worked with who've done this and they've found it really energising. It can take a little while to build up um, because it uses muscles that you didn't know you had. But actually, it helps keep your core muscles toned if you work standing up. If you've got a laptop or something like that, just put it on some books on a higher surface. Um, Make sure that you're not putting any strain on your back. By putting it on at the right level you can find information about that online but you'll be surprised there's research suggests that it could even reduce the chance of developing diabetes supercharge day 28 relaxation guaranteed now we're near the end of our supercharge challenge but with busy lives relaxation can be the one thing that we overlook so today i want you to build in some calm and relaxation whether it's sitting on the bench in the local park for five minutes or trying out a free mindfulness app or a recording while you're on the sofa how are you going to reward yourself for all your hard work could be lots of different forms. It might be a bubble bath as well. It could be time reading a book or rediscovering a craft activity that you really enjoy. If you're interested in a relaxation exercise, then there's a free one available from me, if you like the sound of my voice, <laughs> um, at the 5 2 dietbookcom forward slash meditation. And that's free to download. I must admit, I do find it quite hard to relax. I find that working from home means the laptop is only ever one room away. And I quite often work late into the evenings unless I make a really concerted effort not to. So I find that simple crafts like tapestry or crochet can be relaxing. Um, I also find that subtitled dramas like The French Spiral or uh, The Nordic Killing, The Killing, mean that I have to focus on the screen to understand what's going on and not multitask by looking at Facebook or my laptop. And for a real treat, I love products by Aromatherapy Associates. They're quite expensive, but they are delicious to smell. Oh, their shower oils always make me feel more relaxed. Supercharge day 29. Images can be so motivating or demotivating if they don't show what you want. How many of us have started a diet after seeing a photograph and realising we didn't like what we saw? But you can use positive images to motivate yourself. So you could select a picture that represents what you want from your 5-2 journey and then display it on your phone, your home screen or just on the fridge or your desk. If you're really inspired by pictures, then use something like Pinterest or a physical photo album to collect lovely images that inspire you. Could be all sorts of things. It might be a photograph of the holiday beach you'd like to visit when you're feeling in better shape. It might be a picture of yourself in the dress or the suit that you'd love to fit well or a new dress that you'd like to buy when you get to your target weight. It could be an image of the event that you want to feel confident at. Or you could go for something a bit more symbolic. So say an animal that seems free or happy. It could be a pattern or a colour that represents freedom or liberation for you. Or it could be a work of art or a natural landscape that just makes you feel great to look at it. Now, I'm more of a verbal than a visual person, yet I know pictures and especially colours can have a very powerful impact on me. I like quirky illustrations, but I'm choosing a picture that for me is about freedom and beauty and fun. And it's a picture of my dog with her two siblings playing in the Sussex countryside where I live. It never fails to make me smile. Supercharge day 30. Hooray for you. You've done it. You've completed the supercharge. Give yourself a big pat on the back for focusing on your health and your needs for the last 30 days. Have a think as well. What did you find easy and what was more challenging? And did you achieve your goal? 
your final challenge for today is to give yourself a reward for staying the course. A treat, a gift, or simply a bit of time to sit around and think, yeah, I feel proud of what I've done. Let's think about the next steps as well. Remember, you can use the supercharge anytime you like. You can repeat exercises. You can check out other people's responses in the 5-2 private group. For a lot more information as well, you can go back to the website. You could invest in one of the 5-2 books or download one. You can try out some new, new recipes from the website or listen to our other free podcasts. Me, how have I got on? Well, it's been a bit of a challenge posting something new every day, but it's proved I can do it if I set my mind to it. And the responses on Facebook have been well worth it. So many stories, interesting food ideas. On a personal level, I've completed all my fasts, in fact, more than I intended. I have cut back on my snacking addiction. I'm eating at the table more with my partner and I've started running again properly. Win-win. I hope you've been feeling good. Keep the responses coming and thanks for being with me on the Supercharged Journey. For many more free tips, case studies, recipes and lots of information, visit the 5-2dietbook.com. Follow me on Twitter at The52Diet or download free samples of the books online at Amazon. Thanks for listening.